Hello, good day everyone. My name is Chriselle Wee. I'm one of your campus missionaries. Welcome to Victory, where our heart is to honor God and to make disciples. Thank you for joining us in today's worship service. And again, our heart here in this church is to continually make disciples. Lagi ko tong naririnig, discipleship never stops. But we don't just want it to be something that you hear. We also want to be able to share testimonies with you every week of what God is doing in the lives of people. Alam mo how I wish, pwede natin isa-isahin lahat ng mga discipleship stories. Kasi sobrang hearing them really encourages me. But we're gonna share some of it with you today. And you know, we're... This whole year, we're celebrating our 25th year anniversary. We're looking back on how God has continually been faithful to us as a people, to us as a church. And we hope that you will be able to share your stories as well of what God has been doing in your life. And then just yesterday, we had our high school victory weekend. So our high school victory weekend will ha- happen yesterday and also next Saturday. We had about 14 participants. And even if we did it on Online. Alam mo, minsan, ako, personally, as a campus missionary, may mga times na naiisip ko, Lord, may mga nangyayari ba online? Kasi minsan, hindi mo nakikita eh. Yung mga tao, yung mga bata, kasi sometimes, saka off campus sila. But yung faith lang na, Lord, eh, we will continue to do what you called us to do, and we're in faith that it, there is an effect in the lives of the young people. And yesterday, may mga nag-message din sa amin ng mga students about the revelations that they had from God. And it's really encouraging to continue to make disciples in the campus in spite of the pandemic and the constraints of meet uh, the constraints of meeting one another god isn't walang makakapigil kay lord mag-move sa lives ng mga young people so please to continue to pray for our participants we will be having the second part of our victory weekend next saturday and as well we discipleship is hindi lang siya limited sa mga um, camp, uh, high school students or college students or adults even po yung mga kids Yes, we believe that we should start them early. Kakapanganak pa lang po. Hindi, joke lang. Pero we want to be able to continue to disciple the next generation and that includes the kids. So for parents out there, we do invite you to um, uh, to Kids Church Online, which happens every Saturday at 10 a.m. for small kids. That's ages 3 to 6. And um, for big kids, it um, ages 7 to 12, that happens every 3 p.m. on a Saturday as well. Again, our heart, the heart of our kids' church teachers is to really disciple um, children as young as they are, to help them to get to know God and also to build a community with other kids. Diba kasi, di natin alam, may mga effect din talaga yung sa kids, yung nasa bahay lang sila. But hopefully, as they're discipled, as they get to know God, in spite of them being at home, they'll still continue to be in faith in greater things and be in faith for the future as well. So again, we do encourage you to send your kids to kids to the Kids Church online. And for those naman who are 13 years old and above, we have our Youth Flicks every Friday at 5 p.m. Please do follow Every Nation Campus staff for more information. And so before we continue on with um, our worship, we're gonna have a short interactive activity. So gagawin lang po natin, may mga comments lang po akong babasahin, mga questions, and magsasabi lang po kayo ng, sa comment section ng mga sagot, sagot nyo po dito. So we're just gonna reminisce a little bit. Okay? Sige. So first is, yan, tignan, titignan ko lang po dito yung mga comments nyo. Okay, first, comment a raise hand emoji if you've experienced victory babay. Po, comment a raised hand emoji if you've experienced victory babay. Sige po, comment lang po tayo. Yan. Yung tipong ano, sabi mo nagmamadali ka, kailangan mo na umalis. Tapos nag-uusap lang kayo saglit nung kaibigan mo. Aba, tatlong oras na kayo nag-uusap sa fish pond, tapos nag-iiyakan na kayo. So wala na, hindi ka na nakalis. Hindi ka na mapunta sa next activity. Alala ko talaga dati, after youth service, siguro mga one or one and a half hour hours pa bago kami makakain kasi lahat, kailangan sa lahat magbababay ka. Nakakamiss, no? Pero, alam mo, even online, we still do that victory babay. And pero, syempre, again, nakakamiss talaga yung mga face-to-face. So, dito po, ayan, sila Kuya Jack Reyes, sila Kuya Rodel. <laughs> Sige po, just keep them coming. Did a victory babay. Um, next naman po, comment a pray emoji 
Pray emoji if you stayed in a coffee shop to do quiet time. So yung mga coffee shops tabi ng Harrison dati, um, yung coffee time sa may, ano bang hotel yun? Nakalimutan ko na yung hotel, di ko na maalala yung itsura ng <laughs> Village Square. <laughs> Century po meron, tsaka yung isa pa pong hotel na may... Yes, Orchid Gardens. But ganun, nalimutan ko na. <laughs> uh, hindi, um, ba, ba, nandito sa heart ko, nandito naman sa heart ko. Starbucks lang na alala ko sa Vito Cruz kasi yun yung office ko. Ayan, ayan po, ayan. Yung tipong gusto mo mag, ano, mag quiet time, pero may nakila, nakita kang taga church. Imbis na nag quiet time, nag fellowship na lang kayo. Yun. <laughs> Third, comment your most memorable church camp or retreat. Ayan. Please comment your most memorable church camp or retreat. So marami po tayo, mga youth camps, um, singles retreat, um, couples retreat, ko ano pa po. Si comment nyo lang po dyan. Sa akin, oh my gosh, sa dami. Pero siguro yung pinakauna na lang. Pinakauna na lang. Kasi um, as a young person, I realized ko that you can have good, clean fun together. And ano, sobrang um, maliit, sobrang konti lang kami noon. And it, but it was really enjoyable to see people gathering. And so, pero sobrang competitive no mga tao. It was uh, 2017 yata yung first ko na youth camp. Ito po yan, sila Kuya Rodel, Couple Street 2018. Okay, sila Kuya Jack din. Yan, thank you po sa mga masusugit nating taga-subaybay. <laughs> okay, um, last question. Okay. Comment a jacket emoji. <laughs> Kasi nilalamig din ako ngayon. Comment a jacket emoji if you brought a jacket to to the church service. Lalo na ko yung favorite seat nyo. Alam ko may mga favorite seats kayo. Oo, no, nakatapat sa aircon. Yung nasa ilalim, tapos nanginginig ka. Hindi mo alam kung nanginginig ka dahil sa saya o nanginginig ka dahil sa lamig. Yan, comment po, jacket emo. Wow, Pastor Richie, you are weak. <laughs> Dati nga po, ganun yung pangalan. Okay. Sige po, may mga jacket emoji. Wala po bang nilamig sa inyo? Yan, sa, sa, <laughs> sa SM, hindi mo ba kayo nilamig, nalamigan doon? Yan, thank you Ate Kai for, ano, for commenting. And you know, again, it's so, ang saya lang to look back. Um, to see what God has been doing in our church. There have been so many changes. There have been so many things that have been unexpected. And for some of us, it may have caused discouragement. But I hope that when we look back, we see God's faithfulness. We see that in the spite of a lot of things that has happened, that has not gone according to plan, God has still and is still doing great and amazing things in our midst. Those testimonies, those stories of discipleship happening in the pandemic, si God lang yun eh. And as we look back, we do it to look forward. To look forward to the many things that God will continue to do as a church. As we celebrate our 25th year, we're gonna see, and I'm in faith, we're gonna see God continue to do amazing things in your personal life, but also through victory as a church. Not just in our location, but in different locations all over the Philippines. That one day when we see each other face to face and i'm so excited so excited to worship again with hundreds with thousands of people just crying worshiping god but till that day comes till that day comes we will still continue to rely on god's faithfulness and his alone today we're going to worship god together we're just going to exalt his name because no matter what has happened and no matter what will happen it doesn't change the fact that God deserves our praise, that God deserves to be exalted, no matter what. And I know sometimes we hear this all the time, and there are times we find it hard to believe. But I want us to continually remind ourselves of that truth, that our God is faithful. He will continue to be faithful, and He deserves all of our praise. So this, why do we, I just want to pray for you as we worship God. Lord, thank you, God, for everyone tuning in. Thank you, Lord, because you know our situation. You know what's happening. But God, your faithfulness goes beyond that. And God, I pray that you would help our hearts, our minds, our eyes be focused on you today. I pray that instead of 
thinking of the things that has not gone our way, that God, we would choose to put our trust and faith in you. Even today, as we worship God, may no other name, no one else be exalted in our midst but you and you alone. God, may you be honored in our midst. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen. Why don't we just worship God together? Let's just start this worship time with some prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for this brand new day. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, for your everlasting love. Maraming salamat, Panginoon, for this privilege to just worship you, to just worship your name. We glorify your name, Father. We invite you in this place today. Come on, church.
Just breathe afresh, breathe afresh on us, oh God. We wait on the Holy Spirit. Spirit God, breathe on us. Spirit.
Spirit, just come and touch our hearts right now. Just heal. Heal every part of our heart, oh Lord.
Lord, thank you, God, for assuring us that you are here with us. A very present help in trouble. This is a verse that God has been reminding me constantly this past few. One thing that really popped out was the word very present help. That our God is someone who is already near. Minsan kasi pag may pinagdadaanan tayo, feeling natin na ang layo ng Panginoon. Tapos pag kailangan natin siya kung ano-ano na yung kailangan natin gawin for Him to be with us. But the truth is that God is always here with us. He is very near to us. He is present everywhere, all the time, in any circumstance. And all that we need to do is to go to Him, to run to Him. To find our safety, our strength, our refuge in His arms. Because He is very much willing to take us in. I read this quote from Campbell Morgan. It says here, The secret of confidence is the consciousness of the nearness of God. Knowing that God is a God who continually comforts, strengthens, even during the times that we are not conscious of it. <laughs> alam yung hindi mo alam, pero one thing that's been a revelation is that God continually works even when we do not notice it. But I hope that today that we would turn our face towards Him. Know that He is with us no matter what. And it says in 9 10, Be still and know that I am God. Being still doesn't mean just standing still and doing nothing. But being still means continuing to work, Continuing to do what God has called us to do with full assurance, with full trust in the God that we serve. We can continue that our we can continue to be still, to let our hearts be still, knowing that our God is here, knowing that He is near. And right now, if that's you and you need comfort, you need the assurance that God is listening to you, that God hears you. Let this be an assurance to you. That God is with you right now, listening. And may you feel that comfort right now over your heart, that peace, that stillness, knowing He is in total control. May our faith be ever so greater than our fears, not because of what we have done, not because of our own strength, but because of the strength that comes from God. And I really just feel like praying for people right now who really need to remember that simple truth. I know you've heard it before. This is not the first time you'll hear that He is with you. Pero sometimes kasi in great calamity and distress, that's something we easily forget. But God continually wants to make Himself known, continually wants us to see who He is and how near He is in our life. I hope that we would not bombard ourselves with busyness just to forget, but bombard ourselves with the Word of God, with worshiping Him, that our eyes may be turned towards Him. So I pray God for my brothers and sisters right now who need that comfort, who are going through certain things, through certain trials, doubts, and fears, who need to feel your presence. I pray today that you would just come upon them like a wave. May they hear your voice again. May they see your face. May they know in their hearts that you are with them. And no matter what, the truth of your word says that you will never leave us nor forsake us. I pray that we would continually be reminded of how great, mighty you are, but how personal you are as well to each and every one of us. Thank you, Lord, that we can find our refuge in you, that we are safe in you, so that we can fight another day so that we can continue to do the things that you have called us to do. May you continue to strengthen our hearts and build up our faith that our fears will disappear and we will continue to put our trust in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. 
Amen and amen. Amen. You know, if you need to talk to someone, if you need prayers, if you need counseling, please do reach out to one of our leaders. If you're listening today and you really feel that you need to talk about what you're going through, I pray that you would reach out to someone. We're a church community praying and believing with one another. Um, kung hindi po kayo comfortable writing it in the comment section, pwede po kayo mag um, message directly sa Victory Malate. Pwede diba? Dir- message directly sa Victory Malate. And I, I, I pray that if you're listening, please do not allow those fears and doubts to overtake your heart. But we're here to listen and to minister to you. So with that, <laughs> good morning once again. Welcome to our church service. Welcome to Victory. And again, our heart is to honor God in everything that we do and continue to disciple wherever God has called us. And this whole year, again, we've been celebrating our 25th year. And we want to listen to a testimony by Pastor Julius and Ate Jane Carsula. They are now ministering in Jordan. I've known them since pumasok ako sa church. And grabe lang yung work we got through their lives. So why don't we just watch this video? Marhaba! Salam We are your cross-cultural missionaries here in the Middle East. Hi, I'm Julius, and I was connected to Victory Tap in 1999. Hello, I'm Jane, and I got connected to Victory Tap in 1996. These photos show us doing campus ministry together, serving in the music team, and going on short-term mission trips. These things help us to grow in our walk with God and led us to where we are and what we are doing right now. Together with our three children, Jaden, Jaira, and Josiah, we are currently serving here in Jordan. Thank you, Victory Tap, for sending us. Happy 25th anniversary! Looking forward to greater and more fruitful years of honoring God and making disciples in the Philippines and the nations. Shukran Kathir! Cheers! Thank you! Mwah. And I hope that you're encouraged hearing from them. Rabi lang din talaga yung ginagawa ni God sa lives nila and how they've responded to the call of God. And I hope that if you remember them and our other missionaries, please do take time to pray for them. They're really... Um, in faith as well, in the nations where God has called them. And I pray that if you, you know, ever God will touch your heart to support our missionary, please do as well. And um, as we continue to um, remember what God has been doing and to look back, we're going to show a couple of uh, pictures no, ng mga Zoom reunions natin that happened over the past few weeks. Yan po. So we're showing it now on screen. If you if isa ka doon, mag-shout out ka naman diyan sa comment. Ayun ako. Ayun, ayun lang. Ayun ako. Yan. So um sino po sa inyo yung mga nakasama, yung mga nakapunta ng mga Zoom reunions, 'di ba? Ang daming mga activities. And again, it's so different doing it online, pero nakakatuwa lang din seeing people na ako personally nung pumunta ako, seeing people na matagal ko nang hindi nakikita hindi nakakausap, and it has also caused me to continue to um, connect with them again. Yan. So, I hope that we would continue to connect with one another, continue to be part of Victory Groups, and we're also excited because this November, we will have our main celebration. So, please stay tuned for more details about that. And as we go on to our time of giving, I just want to read from 2 Corinthians 8, verses 1 to 5. It says, We want you to know, brothers, that the grace of God that has been given among the churches of Macedonia, for in the severe test of affliction, their abundance of joy and their extreme poverty have overflowed in a wealth of generosity on their part. For they gave according to their means, as I can testify, and beyond their means, as I can testify, beyond their means of their own accord, begging us earnestly for the favor of taking part in the relief of the saints. And this, not as we expected, but they gave themselves first to the Lord and then by the will of God to us. The Church of Macedonia is really um, an encouraging church whenever I read about it because they were going through extreme poverty. They were going through trials themselves. And yet, as Paul said here, sila pa mismo yung nagmamakaawa to be part of what God is doing. 
to be part of what God is doing in the lives of Paul and the other missionaries and to give generously as well. Not just what they had, but even beyond it. Parang naisip ko nga, ang hirap na nga minsan ibigay yung meron ka. Paano ka pa magbibigay beyond what you have? But it was only possible because of what was said in verse 5. They first gave themselves over to God. They understood who God was in their lives. They had a relationship with Him and their trust was with Him and in Him. And part of the will of God in our lives is also that He wants to use us to be a blessing to the people around us. To continually trust Him, especially in the area of finances. Maybe some of you can relate to the people or what's happening in Macedonia. That you are going through severe trial, severe testings, especially in your financial situation. And you feel in your heart that it's so hard to give. Maybe some of you God has been talking to already about finances. I hope that first and foremost, we would give ourselves over to Him. That we would pray that we will be able to trust Him with all of our hearts. And whenever we return our tithes and give our offerings, we do so out of faith. And may God use each and every one of you, no matter what your financial situation is right now, to be able to be a blessing to others. Because again, and I want to emphasize this, this is only made possible because of the grace of God in our lives. And God is a God who can work miracles. Do you believe that? That our God is so much greater than what we have. And I hope that even as you return your tithes and give your offerings, you will see the faithfulness of God ever increasing in your life. And we also want to hear from you. We want to hear your prayer requests. We also want to hear your answered prayers. So please do type them down on the link that will be posted on your screens. And there are people who are really praying for you. And for more instructions on giving, please go to victory.org.ph slash give and there will be instructions on how you can give through online. And also there is um, an option to give through GCash. Why don't we just pay for our giving? Lord, thank you because you are the God of abundance. Financially and in every area of our lives, I pray, Lord God, that whether we're going through times of poverty or lack or times of abundance, our response would be the same, to trust you with everything that we have. I pray, Lord God, that first and foremost, we would give ourselves over to you first, that we would grow more in our relationship with you, and trust you whenever you prompt us to be generous to people. Even if it feels that sometimes we are giving beyond what we have. Our faith is not in what we have, but in you and you alone. I pray God for overflowing joy as we return our tithes and give our offerings. Because we know we are giving it to the one who deserves more, who deserves all of our best. Lord, thank you and continue to provide for your people. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. And our giving is really our worship unto God. So why don't we continue to worship with the music team? Nagsis 
We are on a series break. Uh, this week is our series break. Next week, so we'll be starting a new series entitled Light for the Nations. And as the leadership of Victory Taft and Pasay are praying for what message would he have for the church um, this week, God led us to this passage in Psalm 90. So I would like for everyone to please turn your Bibles there. Psalm 90. We are going to read verses 1 all the way to the last verse in verse 17. Psalm 90. Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever you had formed the earth and the world, from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. You return man to dust and say, Return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. You sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening it fades and withers. For we are brought to an end by your anger. By your wrath we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins, in the light of your presence. For all our days pass away under your wrath. We bring our years to an end like a sigh. The years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love that we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Make us glad for as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. Let us pray. God, we come to you today in humility, in surrender, in trust and dependence, in hope and faith that with all that's going on around us, God, ito po yung prayer namin, Lord, that you will give us a greater vision of your greatness, that you will give us a greater sense, Lord God, a greater appreciation of your goodness. And we ask, God, that you would give us a greater grasp of your sovereignty, Lord, and your sov sovereign purpose over us, over all the earth. We ask, God, that you would speak to us and minister to each and every one of us even today refresh us strengthen us heal those who are sick strengthen those who are weak make whole those who are broken lord we commit to you this time this i pray in jesus name amen amen Well, we're all aware that we're still in the middle of the pandemic. May mga changes lang in terms of classification ng mga quarantines natin and, and restrictions and, and the lockdown. So alert level for po tayo ngayon. But uh, we don't have an on-site service yet uh, for Victory Taft. And I'm sure you're familiar with what's happening all around us. You know, people are getting sick left and right. People are dying left and right. And we know of uh, family, friends, loved ones. Kaya nga siguro this season, parang mas closer yung mga kilala natin or getting sick or maybe losing a loved one. And, and um, we're, I'd say that we're still in the middle of the pandemic because some experts are saying that uh, the numbers could probably even get higher. Okay, so na reach natin yung highest natin so far. But uh, some experts are saying baka it could even reach uh, higher number than before. So many are asking today, when will this end? How long? Gano pa ba katagal yung titiisin natin? And uh, some of you are probably th thinking and asking this question, will we ever get through this alive and well? Will we, will, will we get to the other side, to the better side of life? And, and will we ever get back to the way things were before? Can we even look to a better 2022 or beyond? Now, the reason why we are led also to Psalm 90 
as a message for this week is because Psalm 90 actually brings up these questions before God. And the psalmist uh, doesn't really give us the answer to these questions, but it shows us a faith response that we can learn, that we can embrace, some lessons that we can apply in our lives so that we can respond well to what's happening around us. The first part of Psalm 90 gives us some introduction of what this psalm is really all about. Some Bibles have this. It says there, Book 4, From Everlasting to Everlasting. So yung title ng psalm nandun din. And then, A Prayer of Moses, the Man of God. Now, um, you're probably aware that Psalm is actually a collection of hymns. It's divided into five books, usually marked by uh, doxologies. And perhaps when the collection was done, parang ano niya, ini-imitate niya yung Pentateuch, the five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. So book one is actually the collection of Psalm 1 to Psalm 41, book 2, 42 to 72, book 3, 73 to 89, and then book 4, Psalm 90, beginning with this Psalm, all the way to Psalm 106. And then the last book, last collection, Psalm 107 to 150, shaping and forming book five. And uh, this psalm was actually considered the oldest psalm because this is a psalm that was attributed to Moses, a prayer of Moses. So this makes it the oldest psalm in the entire book of Psalms. And uh, of course, uh, not, no other psalm was written prior to David. Pero syempre may mga songs in, in, uh, in Exodus, in, in, in some parts of the Pentateuch as well. Pero in the collection of uh, Psalms, here in the book of Psalms, it, ito yung oldest, attributed to Moses. And he was described not just as the prince of Egypt, but as the man of God. You know, we all know from, from our Bible history, di ba, that Moses was a prophet. In fact, the Bible describes him as a prophet unlike any other. Yung ginawa ni Lord through Moses was unlike any other. And he is someone whom God revealed and spoke to face to face. And Moses became a representation of the law. Kaya pag sinabing law usually refers to the books of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Or what we call the Pentateuch. And uh, see, Moses was given this very... Uh, wonderful distinction of someone through whom God revealed His personal name, the great I Am, Yahweh. And uh, someone that is very near and close to God and a faithful servant of God. And what's amazing to me to know this as we look at Psalm 90 is because as we read Psalm 90, kahit pala yung mga great men of God like Moses can have issues with God too. And in this psalm that we read a while ago, and we're going to look into, mararamdaman natin yung mga issues na Moses was trying to bring up to God in a prayer through this psalm. When you read this psalm, some of you are probably uh, resonating. Okay, medyo nag-resonate sa atin yung, yung portions of this psalm, especially the middle part. Let me, let me read this back to us again in verse 3 to 11. Sabi dito, you return man to dust and say, return, O children of man. For a thousand years in your sight are but as yesterday when it is past, or as a watch in the night. So itong psalm na to, parang echo of God's judgment over Adam and Eve. Kasi nga, you know, from dust we came, and to dust we will return. And it's like when God said, return, O children of man, when we see people dying left and right. You know, it's like an echo of our mortality. Ramdam natin yun. And, and even a thousand years for God is just like yesterday. Nakalipas lang. Diba? Have you ever had that experience na parang, ay, 2021 na pala. Diba? Parang kailan lang. Diba? Parang kailan lang. War week pa lang. Year 2000. Diba? Pero ngayon, 2021 na. And you could probably have this sense of how time is really passing by so fast. It's just like a watch in the night. He even said here, you sweep them away as with a flood. They are like a dream, like grass that is renewed in the morning. In the morning, it flourishes and is renewed. In the evening, it fades and withers. So itong psalm is, si Moses was trying to uh, record in writing and for everyone who would read it and for everyone who would sing it as a psalm, for everyone who would pray this prayer, parang mayroong reminder talaga sa atin about the brevity of life. That life is, is short. That life is brief. Sabi nga nila, life is a dash. Every time pumupunta tayo ng cemetery, nakikita natin yung mga tombstone. Usually, my name, my birth 
date and then my birth, uh, the date of uh, death. So date of birth, date of death. And then the whole span of life, whether it's 70, 80, or 100 plus years, is just but a dash. Just like yesterday. Just like a flood. Just like a, a, a dream. Just like a grass that fades and withers. Sabi pa dito, for we are brought to an end by your anger, by your wrath, when we are dismayed. You have set our iniquities before you, our secret sins in the light of your presence. So, ramdam ni Moses yung judgment ni Lord. In fact, ramdam ni Moses yung judgment not just over open sins, but even secret sins. Our secret sins are, are laid before God. Our iniquities are, are right before His presence. And when things are not doing so well, yun ang unang pumapasok sa isip kagay natin. It's like God's judgment is upon us. Sabi pa niya, for all our days pass away under your wrath, we bring our years to an end like a sigh. Okay, parang isang hinga lang. Okay, lalo na yung mga last breath. I don't know if you've seen people give out their last breath. I have seen people give out their last breath. And it's such a deep sigh and... Ganun lang pala yung life natin. Parang isang hinga lang if you really look at it. Sabi pa dito, the years of our life are 70 or even by reason of strength, 80. Yet their span is but toil and trouble. They are soon gone and we fly away. Now remember, this is, uh, this is poetry. This is a song. So yung 70 to 80 years, hindi ito yung uh, talking about the average lifespan that man will have. Na parang limited, di ba? So it's actually an imagery. It's, it's evoking a feeling. It's just like an estimate that life is just really short. 70 to 80, it's really short. And in fact, Moses lived up to 120 years old. Di ba? Pero if you think of 70, 80 years, parang ano lang to? Toil, trouble, soon gone, and fly away. And though many of us don't want to talk about death, di ba? it's a reality that we all face. Kaya siguro hindi natin masyado naiisip yung death. Walang gustong pag-usapan yung, yung sarili nilang funeral <laughs> over, over uh, dinner uh, table discussion. We try to avoid death, but when we're surrounded with death all around us, we can't help but think that life is really short. Life is brief. And sabi pa niya dito, he, who considers the power of your anger and your wrath according to the fear of you? So many of us, siguro, when we read this psalm, yun yung mga medyo tumatatak sa atin. Return to dust. Your anger, your wrath. Life is short. The mortality of man. And when you think of this psalm, actually, when you think of uh, the one who wrote this, si Moses, mas imagine mo yung, yung emotions that are associated with it. Kasi nga, si Moses felt God's anger and he was terrified by his wrath. Now, if you're going to think, kailan ba sinulat ni Moses itong Psalm 90? Now, there are other uh, theories and, and um, scholars have been thinking that maybe it happened during Exodus 32 when the golden calf was made and Moses came down and then judgment was upon the people. In fact, 3,000 died in one day and the Lord sent a plague. Others would say that's probably in Numbers 13 and 14 when the people, um, young spies, entered the promised land and they came back, the 12, yung dalawa lang yung nag-respond in faith, Joshua and Caleb. And the uh, 10 spread doubts and fear and unbelief and disobedience to God. And of course, nangyari doon, the spies died because of a plague. And then there was a judgment that was promised to, to the people, the generation who refused to trust and obey God. Now others, and most probably this is uh, most likely the time when, Mo uh, when Moses wrote this psalm is in around Numbers 20. And so Numbers 20, if you look at the story, uh, namatay na si Miriam, who is the sister of Aaron, who at one point also complained against Moses. Namatay na rin si Aaron, the brother of Moses. And uh, not only that, Moses also struck the rock when God commanded him to speak to the rock so that water can be provided for God's people. Tapos binigyan na siya ni Lord ng, ng judgment because you did not uh, show me as holy before everyone. You will not enter the promised land. So can you imagine yung hugot ni Moses dito sa psalm na to? Actually, if you think about the whole story, for about 40 years in the wilderness, a whole generation passed away. So na-imagine ko si Moses, maybe 
uh, one funeral after another. Sa dami ng mga uh, Israelites who were rescued out of Egypt, some would estimate 2 million, it's probably a million. Others would say 600,000 males, Jewish males. And hindi pa counted yung women and children. But, but think about that. Kung 1 million yun, that's about 26,315 people dying in a year. Kung 600,000 men yun, that's still about 15,789 people dying every year. That's a lot of funerals. No wonder yung Psalm 90 medyo madalas gamitin sa funeral service. It would have been very crushing for Moses to see a whole generation melt away in the wilderness. Tapos alam din niya na hindi rin siya makakasama doon sa generation who will enter the promised land. So nakita niya yung judgment ng Lord over the wickedness, uh, over the wicked Egypt. And now Moses was also seeing God's judgment over his chosen people because they could not trust God. And obey God in spite of everything that God did to save them and to rescue them out of Egypt. So, siguro Moses and everything that he was thinking and feeling at the moment, he wrote this psalm probably with tears, probably with trembling. And if I can summarize the message that he wanted to, sh to say through a song, through a prayer, to everyone who would read it, to everyone who would hear the song, to everyone who would pray this prayer. Now, I, I feel like the echoing of this message, don't get stuck in the middle. Wag tayong tumigil sa middle. Okay, nirescue tayo ni Lord from, from, from Egypt, but there's a promised land that God wants us to go to and let's not die in the wilderness. Don't be too caught up in the moment. Kasi nga si Moses, when he was too caught up in the moment, he did not obey God. Instead of speaking to the rock, he struck the rock and because of that disobedience, he missed out on entering the promised land. And uh, when, when I think about this, actually, when we read this psalm, the tendency is to be stuck in the middle portion of the psalm. Ito yung most probably nag-highlight sa atin when you read it at first reading. Return to dust, your anger, your wrath, toil, trouble. And in reality, parang ganun nga yung nangyayari. Kasi nga, our view of our present, our brevity of life, our mortality, generally affects our view of God. And in the midst of what we're going through, sometimes our view of God in the moment, our view of God in the midst of our challenges, in the midst of our difficult situations, affects our view of God even before and our view of what God would be like in the future. Sobrang encouraging tong psalm na to kasi nga, when I look at it, but it's a psalm of Moses, uh, a prayer of Moses, the man of God. And yet, it's also a song of lament. Merong expression of pain, confusion, and anger that there's something wrong in the world. And it's sort of like complaining to God and asking God to do something. In fact, medyo several psalms din naman out of the 150 are more of lament, hindi lang puro praise. In fact, there's also the book of lamentations. In other words, it's okay for us to express our emotions before God. It's okay for us to pour out our frustration, our anger, our pain, our confusion, our, our complaints before God. Total, kita naman ni Lord lahat, di ba? So, sige, pour out na natin sa kanila. But I think what God is saying to us is that let's not get stuck there. Let's not be too caught up in the moment. What's happening to us right now is not everything there is. That's why I believe Moses, when he wrote this psalm, he started it this way. And this is what I really want to highlight and focus on to us. In verse 1, sabi niya, Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Ito yung simula ni Moses, he is Lord. Now, the word Lord here is not, is not uh, Lord Yahweh, the great I Am, the, the capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. But it's actually the word uh, Adonai, Lord. He's the destiny maker. He is the sovereign Lord. He is the one who makes the final call. He is the one who is ultimately in charge. And he was saying here, Lord, you have been our dwelling place. You have been our, our home. And what a very wonderful description of who God is to Moses. 
Kasi nga, the psalm is not really about Moses, though he's a great man of God. For Moses, the psalm was really about what kind of a God he has come to know, the kind of God that he is worshiping, the kind of God that he is serving. And in acknowledge niya ito si God. He's a destiny maker. He is our dwelling place. And, and when you think about their experience in the wilderness, wala silang bahay doon but tents. Temporary dwelling place. They're moving uh, from one point to another for about 40 years. And when you think about the wilderness, uh, it's actually the harsh, the, the worst conditions you could ever find. Kaya walang tumitira sa wilderness. It's just a temporary place. But when Moses was saying this, sabi niya, God, you are our dwelling place, meaning you are the one that keeps us safe. You are our refuge. You are our divine protection, whether from the Egyptian army or from the harsh realities of life, from the weather, from the heat of the day or the cold of the night. And Moses probably because of their experience with God literally manifesting as a pillar of cloud by day to give them shade and a pillar of fire by night to keep them warm. Nire-remind niya yung sarili and everyone who's going through tough times that he has been our dwelling place. And we are never homeless when we are with God. In fact, he even expanded it by saying he is our dwelling place in all generations. In other words, yung help na pinakita ni God is something that Moses acknowledged did not just happen during the time of Moses. He knew that it happened way, way before that. Long before Moses, there was a covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and he has helped these people. He has helped the forefathers through the years. And Moses, like a declaration, declaration of faith, also was saying that as God has helped us then, and God is helping us now, so God will continue to help us in the future and the future generations. And I'm saying this to give us uh, a question to reflect on. Knowing that God is the safest place. Uh, being with God is the safest thing to have. Are we at home in the Lord? Or are we taking our safety, our refuge, our protection from Him or from something else? Moses, when he could not have anyone to trust and depend on and from his own experience recognize that the Lord has been our dwelling place in all generations. He continued by saying before the mountains were brought forth and can you imagine wilderness, di ba? So sobrang uh, makikita mo siguro yung mountains from afar. Maybe uh, that will give you an idea of where to go pero pagka wala kang makikita mountains parang you can really be easily uh, confused where to go and 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 which direction to take. Pero si Moses, he would see these, these mountains from afar. And, but he was declaring that, that God is even there before the mountains brought forth. Or ever you had formed the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. He was declaring that he is the God who created everything. He is the God who was there even before time began. He is from eternity past and he will continue to be God to eternity present. The eternality of God that he is sovereign, he is in charge, he is in control over all creation. Even if what happens within this small time frame that we have seems to be out of control, he never ceases to be God. He exists independent of all His creation. His nature is unchangeable. His character, His attributes remains the same. He is powerful then. He is powerful now. He will be powerful until the end. And of course, God, having this different perspective of time, grasp niya yung time. Ano ba naman yung 70 or 80 years na buhay natin compared to eternity past and eternity future? It's, it's just but like a small that in a line that never ends. And it's giving us this perspective. And, and for Moses, siguro, parang 40 years in the wilderness, like many of us, when we're waiting, di ba, parang ang tagal naman ng oras. When you're going through a difficult situation, na, na parang feeling mo, yung two hours, parang two months ka nang nandun. Okay, yung two years mo, parang 20 years ka nang nandito. Di ba? And it's, it's just like a, a different perspective of time. 
But Moses was reminding himself, he's declaring that God, he's from everlasting to everlasting. A thousand years? Just like yesterday. Not even today, huh? like yesterday when it just passed. Just like a watch in the night. Parang natulog ka lang, pagising mo. It's like sleep, pagising mo. Ha, tapos na yun? Yun na yung life. It's just like a dream. It's just like a grass that fades and withers. It's just like, wow, 80 years na. 120 years na. And what I think Moses was trying to point out to us is that God is so much greater than what we can conceive. He's so much greater than what we can conceive, what we can comprehend, what we can understand, what we can uh, grasp with our thinking. And that is why we need to worship Him. And the encouragement of, of the Word in Psalm 90 is this. Why don't we worship God out of our weakness? Why don't we worship God out of our sorrows? Why don't we keep worshiping God so that we can go out of our pains and out of our problems so that we can continue to see and declare how great God is in our lives. You know, we are frail. We are weak. Yung life natin, minsan kala natin sobrang laki natin, sobrang untouchable tayo. You know how frail and how weak we are? Just a small virus can put us down. And that humbles us. Kala natin, wow. We're the king of the world. We're the captain of our own ship. We are in charge of our own lives, the master of our own faith. But when these things happen to us, we see how small and how frail we are. How mortal we are. But Moses started by thinking about how big God is. God is so much bigger than our problems combined. He is so much bigger. His peace is so much bigger than all our sorrows and pain. And when we are weak, when we are at our weakest, His strength can be made perfect and shown to be so much better than what we could ever dream or imagine. Let's not be caught up with thinking of our own lives and looking at our own situations. Let's keep magnifying Him, not our problems. Let's keep building our faith, not our fears. I am asking Moses, he, in, in the midst of all this thinking of the brevity of life and our view of, of who we are in our sins and God's judgment and God's anger and God's wrath, it in prayer niya, in, in verse 12, sabi niya, So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. In light of the greatness of God, in light of our mortality and frailty, ito dapat yung prayer natin. God, teach us. We don't know how to live. Left to our own devices, we'll keep going in the wrong direction. We'll keep missing out on the life that we're supposed to live. God, teach us. Help us to know that. Help us to experience experiential knowing. Hindi lang knowing with our heads. To have wisdom. And what is that? Wisdom is basically knowing how to apply our knowledge so that we can do what's right. It's having the faith to solve our problems as we keep in line with God's preferred will. Kaya pag nakita natin yung, yung frailty, yung brevity, yung briefness, ng, ng, yung pag brief ng life natin, parang God, can you please show us how to live? A life that is not just toil and trouble, but a life that is full of meaning. A life that makes sense. Kaya nga ito yung prayer niya, return, O Lord, how long? Have pity on your servants. So kung kanina, return, O children of man, return to the dust. Parang yun yung judgment sa atin because of our sin. Instead of just returning to the dust, ito yung prayer, God, we want to return to you. God, kung... kung We turn away come from us because of our sins and because of what we did, our secret sins, our, our open sins. God, can you return to us? He was praying this, that God will turn from His anger and wrath. Instead, show pity to your servants. In other words, in acknowledge that God, you are God. We submit to you. We are your servants. Can you please give us comfort? Can you be more lenient with us? 
instead of judging us, can you come and offer help? And I know for many of us, that's our prayer during this time. Actually, especially during these times when we learn that we are not in control, it's actually the best time that we can fully surrender to the one who is ultimately in control. And I hope, just like Moses, ito yung nagiging prayer natin. God, we want to return to you. Have pity on us. We are your servants. And this is Moses who's crying out na, Lord, di ba, pinili mo kami as chosen people. And how come, Lord, in spite of your greatness and your goodness towards us, ito pa rin yung treatment namin sa iyo. We did not treat you in reverence, in faith fear, in respect, in, in love, in adoration, in devotion. Instead, we, we, we trust something else. We, we make uh, other gods and we, we give our worship to something else or someone else. Or instead of trusting and depending on you, we trust in our own uh, wisdom, our own devices, our own plans, our own schemes. And that's why we always keep going in the wrong direction. Ito na prayer dapat natin. God, let's just be humble enough. God, we don't know what to do. We're speculating, we're guessing what to do. But can you please help us? Show us your mercy. We are your servants. And look at what he said here in his prayer. Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. That we may rejoice and be glad all our days. Yan ang ganda ng wisdom and revelation na binigay ni Lord kay Moses when he was writing this. Sabi niya, God, Satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. In other words, it may seem like nighttime. It's, it may seem like the darkest hour, but morning will come. God is faithful. But even in the darkest of night, God is moving. So he's saying, God, satisfy us in the morning with your steadfast love. I, I like that description of God. God is someone who had covenant loyalty. God is someone who is perfectly loyal to His own covenant. It's like Moses was giving this appeal, Lord, kung naging unfaithful man kami sa covenant mo with us, Lord, we trust buti na lang God. Faithful ka pa rin in keeping your covenant. Kung nag-fail man kami in keeping our promises, God, we, can we appeal to your faithfulness in keeping your promise? And ito yung prayer niya, God, that we may rejoice, that we may sing for joy that we may be glad, that we may flourish from within. And ito nga yung describe you, that God's covenant loyalty is actually what will truly satisfy us. It will be our ultimate reason for joy and gladness. Kaya nga, imbis na naghahanap tayo ng mga earthly pursuits, things that gives us pleasure, the temptation of the world, the deceitfulness that the world offers, we have to learn to set that aside and turn to God and say, God, you know what's best for us. You are ultimately good and you want to give us the best. Help us, God, to, to lean towards that. Because we know that you're the only one who can truly satisfy. You're the only one who can give us reasons to rejoice and to be glad. And inulit niya pa yung prayer, make us glad. Make us glad. Make us flourish from within. Let us be victorious from within that will eventually be made manifest on the outside. For as many days as you have afflicted us and for as many years as we have seen evil. And pinaka-prayer that God will surpass. Kung gaano man tayo katagal na naghirap in your affliction, na magpapalitan siya ng gladness, na kung gaano man ka, katagal that we have seen evil in this life, that God will give us and show us His goodness. That if we've been living our lives tired and weary, we can come to Him and find rest. And hindi ito yung rest na wala ka nang ginagawa, but rest that you can actually enjoy and and just celebrate God's goodness and the rest that God is ultimately in control because everything has been arranged and nothing can terribly wrong can happen. Yun yung prayer na, God, we want to come to you trusting in your heart that is steadfast and loving and kind towards your people. And I want to remind us that I believe this psalm is trying to show us that God's heart is so much better than what we can hope for. Minsan kasi pag iniisip natin God's judgment and God's wrath and tendency kasi natin lumalayo tayo kay Lord. 
But God's heart, even in His judgment, even in, in when His wrath is being expressed, when justice is being displayed and so that the wrong can be made right, it's still an expression of His goodness and His kindness. Wala ka nang hahanapin pa. Kaya nga, when bad things are happening to us, all the more that we should draw near to Him. All the more that we should pray to Him. Don't let anything pull you away or take you farther from a good God. Our problems are actually our most important prayer points. Kaya yung mga problems, siguro God allowed problems at times so that we can draw nearer to Him, not farther from Him. Problems are opportunities for God to showcase His power and His heart, His goodness, His kindness, His loving kindness towards His people. Pero kadalasan, pagka caught up tayo in the middle, kapag ka, um, uh, we're too caught up in the heat of the moment of, of what's happening around us, medyo na offend tayo, and, and we need to get past our pride and humble ourselves before God. We need to get past our justifying and making excuses for our sins and start repenting and confessing. We need to get past our questions, our complaints. Okay lang yun. Express natin our anger, our surrender to God. Pero sana, it will move us and bring us further to trusting God and declaring, God, you're still good. You're still faithful to your covenant. You're still kind. God's heart is so much better than what we can hope for. And we can always lean and even if we're fading and and withering and slowly dying we can lean more and more towards him we can entrust him with our very lives because he is not just a great god he is a good god verse 16 and 17 look at how this shifted from complaints ito na yung naging ending ng, ng prayer ni Moses ng psalm niya. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. So kung nasa gitna yung circumstance ni Moses, yung start niya is about God. The Lord, you have been our dwelling place in all generations. Everlasting to everlasting, you are God. And towards the end, ito na yung declaration niya. God, your work, not about our work, your work. We are your servants. We're not the masters here. We're not the ones in charge. We are your servants and your glorious power. Kasi nga, kita na siguro ni Moses na wala talaga tayong power out of our own strength. God can display His power through us, but it's not really about us. It's still about Him. Sabi niya, God, your majesty, your, your, your splendor, let it be displayed, not just for the rest of His life, Kasi nga, alam ni Moses na hindi niya aabot sa promised land, pero he was actually thinking of the future generations. Let your work be shown to your servants and your glorious power to their children. Ito ni siguro maybe yung teaching our, our, our hearts to have wisdom, to number our days aright. He was realizing that he can do something that will have an impact beyond this lifetime. He could make his moment count by not being too caught up in the moment. That if he will just respond right in the midst of what's happening, God's work and God's glorious power will be revealed. He was looking beyond his lifetime and he was hoping that the future generations, kung na-miss out man niya yung blessing ng entering the promise, may the future generations experience that and, and learn from the mistakes of the past, and remember the history of how good God is and how great God is, even in the past. Kaya ito yung ending niya, last verse in his prayer. Let the favor of the Lord our God be upon us and establish the work of our hands upon us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. In other words, uh, in prayer niya, God, let the favor of the Lord, something that is agreeable, something that is pleasant, something that is delightful, God, yung splendor, grace mo naman yung iparamdam mo sa amin. The beauty of the Lord. God, help us to see that in the midst of the ugliness of the sinful and broken world around us. Help us to see that. And yung ginagawa namin, Lord, 
our hands, but let it be for your work. Let it be for your plans. Let it be for your purposes. Make it firm, Lord. Make it secure. Make it worth doing. Help us to do what is truly meaningful. And I want to remind us, I believe the passage is also reminding us that God's purpose is so much bigger than what we can formulate. Kaya nga pagka sinasabi natin, God, teach us to number our days, alright? What we're basically saying is that, Lord, help us not just to count our days. Help us to make our days count. Kasi nga, yung purpose ni Lord is so much bigger than our own vision, our own dreams, our own plans, and our own purposes. And diba, ito pandemic somehow has really ruined all our plans. In fact, yung plans natin, hindi mo alam kung may execute mo siya six months from now or a year from now. It's so unpredictable. But when we make God's plan our plan, we know it will succeed. We know that in the midst of everything that's happening, God's purposes will prevail. His good, pleasing, and perfect will. And in a sense, God is giving us the opportunity to be His people. Yun yung, yun yung binigay ni Lord sa Israel. You will be my people and I will be your God. He was making this covenant with them. And in His greatness, we need to worship Him. In His goodness, we, uh, we need to come to Him and draw near to Him and pray to Him. And in His sovereignty, in His plan, in His, His greatness, being God who is from everlasting to everlasting, I hope we need to we realize that we need to partner with Him and serve Him and live for Him. You know, what's interesting, if you follow along the story, Moses missed out entering the promised land. Joshua and his generation ended up entering the promised land, giving them victory after another. But you know what? God is faithful in keeping His covenant to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob na umabot talaga sila sa promised land, although they got exiled a few times. But another bonus for Moses, that though he would, not, he would not be able to enter the promised land, guess what? On the Mount of Transfiguration, in the promised land in Israel, Moses stood there with Jesus, who's shining like lightning, whose face was shining like lightning. Moses and Elijah stood there beside Jesus. So in a sense, Moses was able to enter the promised land. But it's more than just that promised land. Because if you think about Israel, it was under the Roman rule. And it was a situation that the people were still broken. That God's people were still broken. That the promised land is still not according to how God promised it to be if we would trust and obey God. In other words, God still have to make things whole. But what we can see from that story is that the Lord, the destiny maker, who is from everlasting to everlasting, came in the midst of our broken and sinful world to save us. Because the Lord saves. That's what Jesus literally means. The Lord saves. And Jesus, who was in the beginning, as John recorded, who is uh, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word uh, was God. In verse 14 says, He is a God who dwelt among us. Can you imagine the Lord, the dwelling place for all generation, dwelling among us so that we can be at home with Him? To fulfill His covenant, to show us His mercy and His steadfast love, His faithfulness to His covenant, to bring a new life that truly satisfies so that he can give us reason to rejoice, reason to be glad, and so that our brokenness can eventually be made whole again. It is my prayer that God will indeed be our dwelling place for each and every one of us, but not just for us, but for the future generations as well. I know we're going through some challenging and difficult times, but I pray, tulad ng mga fighters who are, have been beat down and sometimes knocked down, but they keep standing up. You know, once these fighters catch a second wind, it's like there's new, renewed strength and power that comes upon them that helps them to overcome. You know, we are dealing with a defeated enemy, 
So even if we get beat down and sometimes knocked down a few times, we don't have to stay defeated. We could stand up and claim our victory. And it's my prayer that God will breathe afresh on us and give you and I not just a second wind. Maybe for you it's a third wind, a fourth wind, a fifth wind. But God will refresh us and strengthen us. And we're going to uh, worship the Lord in a while. Kakantayin po natin tong song again. And let this be our prayer as well, not just for us, but also for our nation. Na kung may mga wounds man tayo na pagalingin talaga ni Lord yung mga hurts and pain and sorrow that we're going through. But if that's you right now, I would just like to pray for you. Uh, kanina na bagit na ni Chriselle, no, if you need prayer, you can just uh, put up a comment there or maybe just type on that or uh, please pray for me, whatever. It's a sign there that, that, that shows us so that we can get in touch with you and pray for you. But if you're here right now, you're in this service, uh, you're watching this online and you are in a season of lament, Merong sorrow, merong pain. Maybe you're grieving or, or maybe you recognize there's brokenness right now in your life. Things are not according to how it seems. I want to remind you, a broken spirit and a contrite heart, God will not despise. We don't have to fix our lives first before we can come to Him. We can come to Him even in broken pieces. He is able to receive us and make us whole. If you can just come to Him in humility, in repentance, in trust, and surrender. Let's just bow. Let's just we pray. God, I pray for each and every one of us, for my brothers and sisters who are going through some tough times. Lord, alam namin, God, that we are all being challenged by the situation. But we know, God, that there are some friends, churchmates, family members, God, who are probably experiencing a more difficult situation than many of us. So God, I pray right now, Lord, as we worship you, as we pour out our, our hearts cry to you, may your spirit breathe afresh on each and every one of us. Lord, may you pick up our broken pieces and make us whole. May you soothe the pains in our, in our minds and in our hearts. May your peace, Lord, settle our doubts and our confusion and our, our unbelief and, and our fear. Lord God, may you cover us and embrace us with your great love. Knowing, God, that you are our dwelling place. And in you, we are safe. Lord, we may not know how long this pandemic will continue. But we know, Lord, that it will end. It will end someday. We pray that it will end soon. But in the midst of waiting, Father God, we ask, give us the heart of wisdom. Teach us to number our days. We want to live our lives to worship you. We want to pour out our all, to draw nearer to you than ever before, to pray like never before, to partner with you, to serve you, to glorify you like never before. Knowing, God, that what we can do here, even if it's just brief, will eventually matter for all eternity because it's not about our work, not about our plans, but your plans. Lord, may you continue to be glorified, Lord God, in the midst of our pain, in the midst of our challenges. This is our prayer, and this is our declaration of faith and our praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just join the worship team as we sing this song as a form of prayer and as our praise and our worship unto our sovereign Lord. Let's worship him. Ang handog ng puso ng 
God, thank you for being here, a God who is ever-present. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us, God, that everything that we do and everything that we are should be about you. Because <laughs> when we focus too much on ourselves and our troubles, that's when fear and doubt comes in and cripples us. But God, I pray that our lives will revolve around who you are and your faithfulness. And our lives will ultimately be lived for you. 
And I know that sometimes it's easy to say, but it's so hard to do. But God, your grace, may it be sufficient in our lives. May we understand what it means. May your Holy Spirit guide us, give us the strength to do what you have called us to do. And yung isang naalala ko nga talaga, and yung remind sa akin is to number my days. To make each and every day count. I know that during this pandemic, there have been times that we, we're just going through the motion. Meetings, paulit-ulit na Zoom meetings, doing the same things over and over again. And maybe there are times we question, is it really worth doing? Is it still something I should be doing? Where is the purpose in all of this? And I hope that we don't find our purpose in what we do. We find our purpose in who Christ is. And even if sometimes there are things that will remain the same, we don't know how long this pandemic will continue. Pero sabi nga ni Pastor Chi, it will end. But I hope that we will become people who will trust God more. That's my personal prayer. I hope that when this pandemic ends, I can look back and say with confidence that I knew God more. That I grew more in my knowledge of who He is. Grew more in the Word. And it will... Uh, can I be honest, it really takes a lot of strength within us. But I know that this strength doesn't come from myself, but from the power of God that is at work in all of us. Not just us as staff members, but even with you. No matter how long you've been a Christian, or baka you're still getting to know God, this does the same strength can work in and through every one of us. And so we want you to know that you are not alone and you do not have to be alone in fighting the battles ahead of you. First and foremost, you have God and there is a church community here willing to stand with you. And I pray for each and every one of us that you would continue to live this life, live the remainder of our days for Christ, for God, and no matter how hard it gets, that we would put our trust ultimately in Him. And I hope that today's preaching will help us to have that forward-looking attitude, forward-looking mentality, but as, at, again, at the end of the day, looking to God and to Him for everything. So thank you for tuning in during our worship service. And again, you, we want you to continue to be part of this church community. We are looking forward. If you're not yet connected, we hope to be able to connect you to a victory group. So okay lang ba sa mga victory group leaders dyan? Or if you're a member, please do type down your victory group schedules. And kung anong victory group ba yun? Kung youth, kung singles, kung couples. Para if there's people who are looking for victory group, they can message you. If you're looking for one, please do also type down kung nagahanap ka ng victory group. Or yun, if you need to talk to someone. We are more than willing to listen. And again, as I said earlier, discipleship never ends. Sobrang nakatulong sa akin knowing that there are people standing with me that they continue to remind me of God's word. And the different um, um, discipleship events that we have, you know, Victory Weekend, which happened yesterday and will happen again um, on August 25, that's Victory Weekend for high school students. So please do continue to pray for them that they will continually encounter God, not just during Victory Weekend, but for the rest of their lives. And again, we want to encourage those you mga parents na may small kids. Diba? Parang we hope that you would also be um, excited to bring them to kids' church online. So for small kids ages 3 to 6, um, it hap, um, yung Kids Church Online happens every Saturday at 10 a.m. And for big kids, ages 7 to 12, that is 3 p.m. So we're excited to see your kids there. Makakilala sila ng ibang kids and grow in their relationship with God. Also, I believe in the power of prayer, especially this season. So please do join us during our prayer meetings every Thursday. So for more information, go to Victory Taft um, in our other social media pages so that you will be updated in what we are doing here as a church. So once again, thank you and have a great day ahead.